accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, signed by the Governor on February 15th, 2022, I announce that this meeting of the Select Board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the Select Board's official office on the Zoom, and ask if there's anyone present who is also recording this meeting. Is anybody up there? No. Let the minutes reflect that nobody else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. They call the meeting of November 2nd to order. We'll start with public comments. I'm sorry, let's start with the consent agenda. Can we pull out a couple of these? Oh, wait a minute, I can't. What's the matter? Shall I read them first or do you want to there pull we go. them out first? I think you should probably read them first, huh? All right. <laughs> Warrants AP 2317S, AP 2317, AP 2316S, AP 2316, PR 2308. Hadley Media Production Assistant Appointment, Stevie Gatto. Special one day alcohol license, E1 Vodka, and there are four different dates. Common Victuallers license, to good DBA Maple Farm Fresh. And we're removing the municipal hearing officer contract. No, no, I'm sorry, not that. That one's in. Municipal hearing officer contract with the city of Northampton. Intermunicipal agreement, fiscal year 23. Mm -hmm. We're taking out the common picture license. And also the um, B1 for discussion? We also have B1 for discussion, okay? So, taking the last. So moved on the others? Second. All those in favor? Hi. Hi. And uh, Stevie is on Zoom today, too. Okay. Do we want to say hi to Stevie? If you want. I think that would be a good idea. Hello. Hi. Hi, Stevie. Welcome aboard. Thank you. <laughs> Great. You want to mention a little bit why you want to um, do this? Uh, yeah, I'm just really interested in local government and I think this would be a really great opportunity. Where are you from? Uh, originally I'm from New Jersey but right now I'm living in Northampton going to Smith College. Okay. And how did you hear about the position? At the career fair. Okay great welcome oh, nice. aboard. Nice. Yeah. yeah look forward to working with you. Are you in communications at Smith? I'm a cultural studies major. Okay. Great. <laughs> good. Welcome. She's a uh, cultural studies major, focusing uh, in um, comedy and horror and comedy. So <laughs> it can be very <laughs> comical. This is true. She yes. has to work in my office. Yeah. <laughs> no, just in the town will suffice. <laughs> really, anything in town. Yeah. <laughs> what year are you in in school? I'm a senior. Oh, so we got we we got to take advantage of you for as long as we've got you, huh? Yeah, maybe we want to stay in the valley and see what's available, right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. So um, we pulled out the special one day alcohol license for B1 Vodka. Any special reason, Molly? Uh, yeah, we just wanted to make sure. Um, I think there was a question of whether or not that needed to be subject to inspection by the fire department. Is that? That was one of the restrictions on the purple. Okay, so so just um, I'll make a motion to approve that subject to a favorable um, inspection from the fire department. And building commissioner. And who? The building commissioner. Oh. Okay, so f uh, favorable inspections. <laughs> Same time. Okay. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and we're removing maple farms foods from the agenda because of a discrepancy in their filing with the state. They'll be coming back on um, your meeting on the 16th. Thank you. They're going to meet with Jessica and tomorrow. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Done with that. Done with that. Public comment. Anyone here for public comments? Please raise your hand if you are. No one's raising their hand. I do think it's important that you face the microphone. That I face the microphone. Okay, but then somebody has to tell me who's got their hand. She will. Jennifer. Oh. Thank you. 
Yep. So there's no one raising their hand for public comments at this time. Thank you. All right, Linda. Yes. We're going to have a fiscal year okay. 23 financial is update. Mic is on. All right. So um, we 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 try and each year visit what went right or wrong last year or what could be improved on and and um, I'd really like to be able to come to you quarterly to tell you where we are with the revenues and expenses. Um, and for those who have board docs, the schedules that we are going to be looking at tonight um, are on are on board docs. And um, I will just, I know I've got, I know we've got a 6.30 hearing, so I'm going to move through, and it's not a lot of detail, but let me explain what this is. Um, I keep a report that, and this was on the general funds, which show our revenues to date. The current year, FY23, is in the, are in the green blocks to the left. We're doing it, uh, we're comparing to FY22, which are the center blocks, and FY21, which are the pink blocks to the right. We thought it was important last year to have three years worth, especially since we were coming out of COVID. If it feels like it's too crowded and too much information and we just want to look one year back, that's okay too. I, we're, I'm always interested in hearing um, feedback so that you're getting the right kind of information. Last year, we were doing this monthly and sending it, you were receiving it by email. I think that's entirely too much information. You don't know what are the important things or what are, and what aren't. When we do the revenues quarterly, then we know that within that quarter, we have received our quarterly payments from the state. Um, there's been a round of real estate collect, uh, tax collections. Uh, there's been one round of water and sewer receipts. So the, uh, it's much more significant to look at the, uh, the revenues as of the end of September, December, March, and June than it is to know what it is in October or February or, or middle of, of April. So um, this, I hope, will, will give you more, uh, more important information but at fewer steps along the way. And then what I do with each of them, um, let me see if I, yeah, there it is. Oh, I have to hold it. Okay, I'm going to use the, uh, this, but I don't know if it's on the camera. So following the yellow line across, that's where we are right now, the first quarter ending in September. Uh, real estate taxes, local receipts, and net state aid add up to the total of revenues, and then the, the last column in the green um, for 23 are the total expenses. Now, th along the bottom then, there are uh, percentages. And I apologize, it says FY22, but this is F the, the, that should be 23, and I'll correct it for next time. So we have our, our, where we are in each of those categories and in the totals. We're at roughly 25% with each one, which is just where you want to be at the quarter. I mean, really, uh, we're really doing fine. And this is compared to the percentages as to where we were at this point the year before. So if you follow through to the 22 column, at this point last year, we were uh, the, 20, uh, the total revenues were at 24%. This year, they're at 25%. The total expenses, we were at 25.29. This year, we're at 25.71. So if you want to know, well, what are the main points? What am I supposed to get, be getting out of this? That's what I uh, put the notes in at the bottom. So the notes show the, the points on the revenue are that our, um, in each of our categories, we are either slightly ahead or very comparable with both FY22 and FY21 both with revenues and expenditures. And the last piece of information I have on the report, so that you always know where we are, whether we're going, you know, either people are asking you or we're going into a town meeting and you, and you just want to have a feel for where we stand. The last line, uh, the last section I have is on our free cash. Um, we were certi uh, we'll start with what we were certified at, which was 1.75 uh, million um, at the year end. Uh, we spent money at town meeting and following town meeting. If you follow over to the right, uh, we have $1.4 million remaining in free cash after our special town meeting. We will continue at that number until we get to annual town meeting. The number, uh, our amount in free cash does not change between meetings. It changes at the meetings because we, even if we were to get a lot of money in and we said, we know we've got lots of extra money we weren't expecting, it's not ours until it's certified. So we're always starting with what we were certified in July 1, 
we're subtracting what we spent at town meeting and we have to keep that money all the way up until the next, um, next certification, which is the end of the fiscal year. So that's the one on general funds. And I think I can spend a little less time on that next two, but just understand the next one is the water. It's set up exactly the same way. In the so, and can I just ask a quick question sure. about that one? So on the, the local receipts in particular, where it looks like we're, we're running ahead of the prior years, mm -hmm. um, some of the local receipts are, are um, time. So when you think about excise taxes. I That's mean, on one of the sheets here. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to ask about the timing. So is that? It's in. Yes, because the excise taxes come on the, uh, they're actually in the very same payment as the rooms the rooms, the meals, and the cannabis excise taxes are paid quarterly, and they're paid on the last day of the quarter. Okay. So we received our first payment on September 30th, yeah. and we won't receive the next one until December 31. Another really big reason to not bother with what's not to take too much time with what's <coughs> going on in between, mm -hmm. because even though quarterly we have a, about a quarter of the revenues, we're not going to have four twelfths of the revenues next month right. and then five twelfths. Right. So um, I, I think this hopefully gives you the, the, you know, the right information that you need. Okay, thanks. Thank sure. Good sense of what you're presenting. Thank you. mm -hmm. All right, and then uh, the water is set up in the same way um, with the, uh, the percentages. Once again, uh, my notes at the bottom will show that they're very comparable to FY21 and 22. When I say comparable, well, just to be clear, it doesn't mean the dollar amount is the same. Each year we do a projection as to how much revenue we're going to get and what our expenses are going to be. That, for expenses, that's our, that's our budget. And then, so it's a percentage of those totals that are being compared from year to year. So if we got 25% of our revenue last year and we're about 25, well, a little less, uh, no, 25% of our revenues this year, that means that's a percentage. Dollar-wise, you'll see they're, they might be a, a bit different. But this is based on our project on our um, a percentage of our projections. So is FY23 the only time frame where we had a water ban in place? Uh, say, it. did we have the water ban in place in the prior years as well? Yes, at least last, last year. year. Was there last year? Well, we had a lot of rain. Not this year, but we had yeah. a lot of yeah. rain last year. So it I does. Know. I think it might have been every year in the last like I do years. too. Yeah. I don't know. That's why it's actually helpful to compare the, uh, the quarter to the quarter exactly a year ago yeah. so that we're, ha we're experiencing the same season, not necessarily the same water levels. Mm -hmm. um, it was lower last year, which is why one reason our, our water receipts were down mm -hmm. and why going into this coming season, we had to lower the projections of the water and the sewer, particularly the sewer, based on what we received the prior year. So there we are, Is this, uh, that's, so that's the water one. Again, we're very comparable, a little below in the revenues. Um, uh, I don't think significantly below. I mean, we're really going to have a better idea of it in the next quarter. And again, at the bottom of the last item would be the water reserves. Uh, we started at 1.2 million certified. We spent money at town meeting and we now have 1.133 million left after town meeting in water. The next chart is sewer. And uh, for those, uh, to explain why these are set up separately, um, we have a water enterprise fund, which is, is um, self-sustaining. We have a sewer enterprise fund, which is self-sustaining, and the rest of the budget is paid out of general. So we don't lump it all together. We have, we have to treat these funds separately. The general fund is paid out of um, our, our, uh, our free cash and our receipt, our tax revenues, local receipts, and many other items, but water and sewer are just out of the receipts collected for those purposes. So that's the way, uh, did I do sewer yet? Okay, sewer is basically, okay. Did I? I forget, yeah, did I cover it? Right? Okay. Uh, so sewer, there we are with the uh, similar, I guess we look to be a little bit ahead in revenue, um, but still what I would call fairly comparable at this time of year. Uh, it does look like expenses are down, but if you look at 22 and 23, we're at 13% of the year. But last year we were at uh, almost 12, and a year before at almost 12%. It just happens to be where some of the expenses in that department lie. I can't tell you exactly why, but this is why we compare to prior years, because we have various expenses. Um, that is true in all three of the budgets. We have certain times a year where, where we are hit a little bit heavier in expenses, and so the... Um, the 
percentages will fluctuate. So does that seem like a, way, a good way to make these reports to you each time? Okay, good, mm -hmm. good. And then I would, like, I would like to add each time a, a fun financial facts uh, section of the presentation, <laughs> which is the excise tax comparison chart. And I mean, it, this, this is just so interesting and tells us so much about really what's going on in Hadley. What, uh, what we did, and I say we because of my, uh, my, this was on a weekend and my husband and, um, and I did this together because we were talking about the excise and how we compared to the other towns. And so we went right to the website and pulled the information out. Um, and we all know how, that we always talk about how we get a lot of our money and a lot of our funding comes out of the excise tax, our businesses. Um, that specifically is businesses, so that all understand. We have three kinds of excise tax that we get money back on. One is meals, one is our rooms, which is our, our hotels, motels, and the third is, is cannabis, um, which is fairly recent. For all towns, it's fairly recent. Obviously, it's only been a couple of years. Um, we know it's a high percentage in Hadley. We know we, we, that, that's a good figure for us, and we know we expand, experienced a real drop in this during COVID. What I honestly didn't um, realize is when we compare it to the cities and towns around us, how much more significant it is to Hadley than to the other towns. And it, and it really is. When you look at our total for the year for Hadley, which as you see at the top, we have a population of 5.3, um, yeah, a little over 5,000. We have a budget of 21 and a half million. We receive from, in FY22, uh, $1.47 million in excise tax. Um, that's a lot. That's about 7% of our total revenues that's going into supporting our budget. Um, if you dropped at the, the lower section shows just the first quarter of 23, we've already received 480,000. If you look to Amherst, and this is, this is just a factor, this is not you know, to Hadley's credit or I'm not criticizing any other towns, this is just to see where we stand as opposed to them. When you look at Amherst, we're, we're almost, almost double. I mean, the, the Amherst is obviously a lot larger population and budget, and for FY22, they took an 810,000. We like to- come so 1% of their- um, Yes, less than 1%. And Hatfield and Sunderland are also closer to a half percent of their total uh, budget um, f that they receive from meals and rooms and, and they don't have uh, the cannabis business. Um, we like to think of ourselves, we're Hatfield and, and Hadley are kind of sister uh, towns in some ways um, and always have been. However, the, the, our business district is so significant to the impact of not only our revenues but also to our budget and helps to explain for those who wonder why our police or fire or high, why our departments are so much larger than what we think of as comparable towns. This is why. Um, it's, it's, this is not just revenue figure. This is evidence of the, the success of the businesses in, in our town. So if you look at something like our meals tax, the, that's, um, we're collecting Mm, this past quarter, 120,000, but for the year 444, that is going to fund our budget, then we also have to provide the services that do the permitting, the inspections, um, and um, anything else that, that it might entail. And this is true of our rooms and our cannabis um, as well. All the, the success of these businesses means revenue to the town, but it also means we, in turn, have to put a certain amount of money back in to the services required of these businesses. Um, so I, 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 just, I just really think this is amazing. One other thing I want to point out about this is um, people often ask about, well, what happened to our ARPA money? And we said, well, we put it into revenue replacement, didn't everybody? Um, no, they didn't. We had such a drop, um, we were impacted more significantly than the towns uh, around us in the drop in the rooms and the meals excise taxes. Um, I, I looked back to, uh, and fiscal, ni uh, fiscal 19, we had taken $1.2 million in from uh, meals and rooms, it was at the time, and that dropped to 750000 in FY21. That's a drop of over 500,000, and we happen to have put in as revenue replacement 
the 500 and was it 500? Yeah. 580,000 almost from our can uh, from our ARPA funds to directly handle our revenue replacement funds. Um, we receive ARPA based on our population. We spent our ARPA based on, based on um, the revenue replacement that we needed in order to continue to maintain the services that, the, that these businesses still required in spite of their lower income and in spite of the lack of, in fact, needed in some cases, stepped up uh, attention from us and as we all work together to try and uh, come up with various solutions to keeping them in business. So, um, so there's, that, that, there's that part of it too. And I just thought that this would be um, not only just interesting to you, but also help, also help you in answering some of these questions that I know we get and you probably do too. Um, we only got a bit more than one and a half million dollars in ARPA funds. We spent 580,000 one year and we used 400,000 the next in the revenue replacement. We had very little left over after that. And so we certainly are aware that there are towns who are saying, well, how are we going to spend this extra money? And, and um, they're able to, um, put, put it in, to put it into some very creative uses. And I think that um, I wish that we had that capacity as well. But hopefully this helps explain Hadley's situation, which, as always, is unique. We all, you know, there's nothing quite like Hadley. We say that over and over again. And here it is. It's true. And I think, you know, something to, to bear in mind as we get into um, the budgeting season two when people are coming forward, because I think to your, to your point, you know, the point you're making is that, you know, we have building inspections, we have fire police support. You know, we always say we're a city by day, we're a sleepy little, mm -hmm. you know, village at night. Um, but in order to keep that revenue coming in, we need to make sure that we're getting the inspections done and doing that and that we're staffed adequately right. um, to make that all happen, which we all know right now we're beyond stretched. So. Yep. And, and, and I'd like to just on a personal note say, note say that I think one of the amazing things about Hadley is that so many of us continue to think of us as a small town, and we are a small town, and we've got the, the, the farms and, and the other aspects of the, of being a small town community. Um, and the, we have this happening down Route 9, and we're still able to maintain both. So I don't see all of this business as changing, Hadley. We're trying to think of this in terms of, we have kind of, we've got two things going on. This is like expanding Hadley's identity while we're trying to keep the old and keep up with the new, which, um, face it, is funding a lot of what is, is subsidizing our ability to remain the kind of community that we want to be. I think these numbers, the way you presented them, are very useful. Thank you. And I look forward to quarterly reports. Okay. Very good. Did Any it, other comments? No, just did a nice great job, job Linda. Thank yeah. you very much. Also, nice job. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. It's almost time for our 6.30 hearing. Is he zooming? Must be. He's not here. Uh, yes, Benjamin Coyle is here, but we do need to wait uh, three <coughs> three whole minutes okay. before we start it. Jim's here. Can we yeah, park so and Jim's here in for three parking. minutes? Rec? I think that's going to be longer than three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You do? You could do the DPW Feasibility Committee appointments. That would yeah, that would be really good. minutes. Okay. <laughs> Feasibility Committee appointments. We have, we have a full committee to appoint. Um, in addition to who you appointed at the last committee meeting, we have Walter Chukowski and Jim Maximoski, who are interested in being a part of the DPW building feasibility study. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. I think those are great additions to the committee. That is what I've heard. And good representation from the town. I agree. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Motion passes. Now we only have two minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were too fast. <coughs> Don't we can, beat around Jane, the bush. Jane, if you just want to let them know that the Hadley Housing Authority is not going to be on the agenda. It's the Hadley Housing Authority was put on the agenda because we had not heard when they wanted to meet with us, but we are not going to be talking about the Hadley Housing Authority tonight. So that is removed from 
the agenda. I'm just going to twiddle our thumbs for two minutes. Special town meeting recap take a long time? Or? Yeah, that's long. Uh, that's a conversation. Okay. All right, I will make one announcement now while we have people's attention. The Russell School Committee is going to be having a forum here at the Senior Center on the 14th of November at 6.30 in the evening to talk about um, why they're doing their survey and answer questions. 6.30? 6.30 here. We might be done with the ambulance committee. Probably, yeah. If we start at 5, yeah. It's almost 6.30. Almost only counts in horseshoes. We That's need, true. We need Stevie the Comedian to be here <laughs> to entertain us. Or Cornhole, one of the two. <laughs> cornhole takes so long. Did you see that there's a cornhole scandal of a group of cornhole? <laughs> yes. No. The people cheated. Oh, First no. fishing, now cornhole. What there, it, nothing sacred. Okay, yeah. it is 6.30. 6.30. All right, who's open the hearing for the change of location? Jennifer? Yes, um, so uh, Parmark Beverage is asking for a change of locations from their Hadley Farms Meeting House to their Homewood Suites, um, which is 340, ben, 340 um, Russell Street. And their attorney, Benjamin Coyle, is here, and he can speak to it. <coughs> and I believe that Chief Spank Mabel and myself also have a couple of extra things, but I'd like to let Ben start. And it looks like Shardul is hopping on right this moment. Okay, great. Good evening. My name is Benjamin Coyle. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Bacon Wilson. Represent the applicant, Armar Beverage LLC. As Jennifer indicated, this is a change of location from 24 Bay Street uh, in Hadley to 340 slash 350 Russell Street. I know that the, the town has the, the assessor's office has it at 350 uh, Russell Street. Um, this is simply a change of location for, from uh, the current location to the Homewood Suites. It's going to be business as usual, just like it was at the other location. It's to provide uh, alcohol at the at the location for the meeting room that's there, as well as the um, the patrons who are staying at the facility. There is not going to be a separate bar. It's going to be for sale at the the front desk. It's going to be stored and secured at the facility as well. The intent is to have it available for the meeting rooms as well when there's functions in, in the meeting room on the first floor at the facility. Did provide the stop. We're having a hard time hearing you here in the in the room. So I'm gonna ask you to pause for just a moment. Thank you. Yeah, it was coming in. Ben, can you do a test for us again? Just sure. Can you hear me now? Much better. Much better. You, and I'm going to ask that you you repeat yourself because we were not able to hear everything that you were saying. Okay. My, my apologies. I'm not sure. This, this is, is a, a change of location from, from the current the location, location at 24 Bay Street um, to 340 slash 350 Russell Street, the Homewood Suites. This is uh, uh, the intention is to run the operation very similar to the prior operation. It is to be ancillary in nature to the the uh, facility at Homewood Suites. It's to provide patrons with the ability to have alcohol as per the prior license. It is not to establish a bar there. There's not going to be a separate bar. It's going to be stored and secure at the facility. It's for patrons who are at the facility and for use in the meeting room when they have uh, events in the meeting room as well. It is not the, the main focal point, but it will be a, an addition to the services that are offered at the facility. The Everything else is gonna remain the same there and we're just looking for approval to change the location. Can answer any questions that you might have as well. 
So yeah, can you explain? Oh, sorry. I was say, can, can you just be a little bit more clear on you saying that there's there's no bar? You know, so I'm thinking about going to a hotel. Okay, I get that part. But that you say it will be available. So how would people, if somebody wants it in their room, do they go to the front desk and ask for it? Or yes, yes, that's exactly that's what exactly would happen. You, you would be you able, able to, to to call the front desk or stop at the front desk for uh, purchase, and then it would also be available for those functions that are happening in the meeting room at the facility as well. Now, the alcoholic beverage uh, license does not cover that. Does not cover what? It doesn't cover taking the alcohol to the room. I believe that this is a, ho I believe that this is a hotel license and that it does cover the consumption in the, in the rooms should the board Allow it to. So the previous license did cover going. It, the license included all of their hotel rooms. Um, I do have concerns about the fact that I don't think this is just a change of location. Um, Happy Farms Meeting House was an event space, and they did have a bar at their location. I'm worried about who is serving the alcohol. Are all of the front desk workers going to be served safe? And also. Who is serving the alcohol when you have events in the meeting spaces? Because when they had events at Hadley Farms Meeting House with a full bar, there was a bartender who was Serve Safe certified. So I'm wondering, it, will you have a Serve Safe certified uh, bartender at all events where you intend to serve alcohol within Homewood Suites? Yes, you're doing it from our oh, hi, uh, hi, yeah, all of our bartenders at events will be TIP certified. Um, our managers are um, at the facility and everybody else are, are surf safe certified and will be TIP certified also. That's just the way we've always done it, even at the Hampton Inn. Yes. Okay. So, like they, they sell like so if when it comes to alcohol, like they would sell like a bottle of wine on open. Yes. So that's I mean, I've experienced that like a lot in my travels cross country, but you're not they don't they're not selling open containers or they're not mixing cocktails or anything for right? Is that yeah. No, th those we would we would set up uh, essentially a portable bar in in the meeting room for those occasions, but not at the front desk. So for a single for like a single room occupancy individual, you you would only be selling closed containers if they open themselves in their rooms. Correct. Okay. So as a guest, I couldn't get a gin and tonic on a hot day. No. No, no, and essentially it's the, the current operation, even though Hadley Farms is no longer operation, we've operated this um, without any issue throughout uh, the, since we've been licensed. So we've been doing, we've been doing this since we were, we've been, we were awarded the license when we opened Hadley Farms and have, op and have in the past operated the hotel and sold and done everything. Um, again, without any issue. We're just, um, in terms of right now with Hadley Farms, uh, in, with the difficulty reopening right now, we do have a meeting room at the Homewood Suites that is quite busy and we do get many requests for alcohol on the site. So uh, that hotel and, it, and the nature of the hotel uh, it just lends itself to have an alcohol license at the at the facility. So this is this is asking us to take one license and let it cover both hotels. No, no, no moving it. No. So you're not going to offer it at the Hamptons. No, no, we would not. No, this would be transferring it to this hotel, uh, essentially replicating what we were doing in at um, Bay Road to what we're doing now at the Homewood site.
Correct. Okay. Mike. Just to, okay. I just wanted to clarify for anyone that might be listening in. When it comes to purchasing from behind the counter, um, individuals looking to do so would have to provide a room key or evidence that they are staying there, right? That is correct. That is correct. Yeah, yeah, and ID, yeah. obviously. Okay. Um, I, I have one more question. Um, Chardot, at this time, y'all don't have a common vehicular for uh, the Homewood Suites, and I did not receive an application for that. Um, it sounds like y'all might be serving food there occasionally. What we do, Jennifer, and just just to clarify that, I did complete that today and submit it, Jennifer. You'll be getting the the original copy uh, tomorrow in the in the packet. I did have Chardul complete that today. Yeah, in 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 the past we've been we've had catering, but once we have this and a lot of the other food that we do serve is kind of a, a extension of our breakfast food, we, we're really not doing any lunch or preparing anything for lunch or dinner, or things like that. Right now, we're just ex extending what we do offer at the, at kind of at our breakfast uh, items, which are just pre-cooked. Everything is kind of comes in boxes and we warm it up. So you probably should have had a common vehicular all along. I was under the understanding you were not serving food there at all. So I'm glad that that's taken care of and we'll get that issued at the meeting on the 16th. Okay. Mike, you had some questions. Hi, Shardul. Hi. Hi. Uh, just a question. Will this be uh, extended to outside of the building? Will you be extending it for like tents out in the back or anything like that? Well, there is a patio area outside um, that outside of the meeting room area that so would be extended out there. Other than that, we don't plan on um, doing tents and things things like that. We, ha we haven't, I, I don't believe we've, we've ever done any large events. We're trying to keep it simple and small in, in the meet general area of the meeting room right now. And I believe you saw the comment from the police chief. We're just concerned about uh, if it's going back to the room that it's, you know, that, that there is going to be security involved with that transaction to make sure that it's not being handed off to folks. So <clears throat> I, know, I know you can't follow them back to their room, obviously, but if we could just be cognizant of that. And is there a limit on how much uh, a patron can purchase, uh, a guest can purchase? And is it, uh, I seem to remember the Homewood Suites that it wasn't actually behind the counter. It was in a little small shopping area that you would open up a cooler and bring it to the counter. Is that how this is gonna be set up or will this all be secured behind the counter? Because it sounds like you're talking about, I'm assuming it's only going to be beer and wine, or are you actually offering up hard alcohol as well as part of the... At the front desk, it'll just, just be beer and wine. So the, the event, events would have the full bar set up. Right, right. the events would be, would be separate. Yeah. And in terms of volume, we don't typically stock it. Um, we don't stock much in there. Usually it's just one kind of one row in the bottom. And we probably have maybe a dozen items some, most of the time. We try not to, it's not something that we're looking to make it into a store. Um, looking at the application, it does not mention the patio on the application. It mentions the pool area, but I believe the pool is inside. I've not been in there. So the patio, it is. Is, the patio is not mentioned in this. Um, so that, that would not be a part of the liquor license. Okay. I can, I can update the, the description with the board's approval. Right. Would, you update the, would you update the description? I do feel since it's going outside, it becomes a matter that you have to notify the abutters again. So we would need to continue the hearing <coughs> and notify the abutters again if we're going to have an outside premise. What, why don't, well, we can proceed the way that it is now, and if we want alcohol to be served outside, we could always do an expansion of the license premises to include the, the patio in the future. Would that be acceptable? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Especially since we're going into winter, and it probably won't be. Right. Exactly. You're not. You're not going to head out there anytime <laughs> soon. That is correct. So, um, no. so those are the concerns that that have been brought to me by the 
fire chief, the police chief, and, and myself. Um, we just want a clarification that are that some of those things just come out in the meeting that, that don't come out so easily in an application. So at this time, um, I would recommend the application is complete, and um, I would recommend, with your pleasure, to approve it, to change of location. So I'll make a motion to approve, subject to satisfactorily uh, satisfactory response from the Parmer family to um, any conditions or questions that were raised by public safety and building inspections. I have a second by Amy, motion by Molly. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have to abstain. Parmar's are clients of mine. Thank you. Is that four to one? Four to four, four zero. zero one. Thank you, Ben and Shardul. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. All right. And it is 644. Good timing. <laughs> uh, perhaps I could go ahead and introduce everyone as sure. we group up to 645. Sure. Um, I see that uh, attorney Tom Miller is here for uh, Pride and attorney James Channing are both here for the Pride. This will be, oh, it's 645. This will be a, a change of owner and a change of beneficial interest. And if Jim or Tom, if y'all, which one of y'all would like to take it? Do you guys get to hear from me tonight? Um, good evening. Madam Chair, members, um, my name is Tom Miller from McDermott, Quilty & Miller in Boston, uh, here on behalf of the licensee, um, Pride Operating LLC, and their application, as mentioned, for change of ownership and change of officers and directors. Um, as, as also mentioned, Jim Channing is here with us in House Counsel for the licensee, and we're also joined by Attorney Maury Bricks, who is General Counsel for GPM Investments. Um, for a brief overview of this transaction, uh, the licensee is currently owned by Pride Holdings LLC, which is owned by Pride Parent. We're applying to transfer the beneficial interest in Pride Holdings from Pride Parent to Pride uh, to GPM Investments. GPM is a wholly owned subsidiary of Arco Corporation, a publicly traded company. While we're here, you know, while we're here tonight, because of these changes, there will be no difference in the day-to-day -day operations of uh, the licensee for this store on Russell Street. The store manager and the manager of record will not be changing. Uh, both Jim Channing and Marsha Medina, the LLC manager, have been with Pride for a number of years. They stayed on during previous transitions and will be staying with the licensee after this transition as well. The board and customers will see no difference in the way the stores are run day to day. Um, GPM is an experienced operator with over a thousand licenses in different jurisdictions across the country. They understand the responsibilities of holding this type of license. They look forward to the opportunity of entering this new market in Western Mass. Um, the application for a change of officers and directors is simply reflects the proposed change in ownership from Pride Parent to GPM. Um, as the board is aware, it, the ABCC has conducted a preliminary review of these applications and is satisfied subject to your approval uh, of, of the overall transaction. As I've said before, this is simply a transfer of the beneficial interest in the licensee with no change in the way that the stores are run. We want to thank you for hearing this application tonight, and we're happy to answer any questions you have. I'm just going to confirm this is just the single pride that's the large one, the newer one built on the west side of town, it has nothing to do with the one on the east side of town. Uh, uh, it's the one, one on Russell Street. Street. They are both on Russell Street, oddly enough, but yes, this is the this first ride right over the bridge. Okay. The, yes. That's what I Sorry, Russell Street's a very big street in town, and they just run straight through it. <laughs> I, I understand. Okay. Right. But yes, that's the one for the license. Are there any other questions? So the ABCC did review this because they have so many holdings in the Commonwealth. It's already been approved. Um, I did the research on the change of ownership, they're registered with the Commonwealth, so I, I do recommend that y'all approve this. Does this also, um, the liquor license go with this also? Yes, this is for
for the liquor license. Okay. It'll transfer to the new parent company, and and it'll be. Y'all won't really, as he said, nobody's going to really notice the difference. It'll okay. just be a paperwork on our side. Okay. So moved. Second. Motion by Amy. Second by Joyce. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposition? Passes. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Have a good night. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Greg. All right. We invite Jim in as well? Yep. Come on in. <laughs> no, I was talking to Jim. Welcome. How's everybody? Very well. Good. good. So, before I ask for anything, um, I want to thank Joyce. She gave up about five or six hours on Sunday to help us do the rag shag, and uh, we really appreciate it. We need a lot of volunteers because we haven't had that many people come, apparently, in a long time. So, um, thank you for helping make it the success that it was, so it was we appreciate fun. the help. And of course, your mother and I always have a good time, so it's always good. <laughs> But the thing of it is, is that you guys also did a great job. I mean, it was so well put together, so decorated. The fire and the police, everybody just, it was a great event this year. It was. Um, we couldn't have done it without the uh, fire and police department blocking the intersection. Yeah. That's and important. It yeah. would have been a nightmare. Yeah. It, we had way more people than I expected. Yeah. So it's so. great. So these things are growing. And so just a reminder to everybody, it's so nice to have Park and Rec. There are only three commissioners. So um, keep in mind that it's always good to say, hey, I got a couple of hours, uh, you need some help. Sometimes that's all it needs and takes. You don't have to do a whole lot, but just sometimes, you know, volunteer. It doesn't hurt. And we had some uh, National Honor Society and some uh, Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts. Yeah. And we couldn't have done it without them either. Yep. I mean, it, we had a lot. Keep Greg, going. Greg coordinated everything. So, yes, did a great job. Uh, we Greg. just gave up some time to help, but Greg did everything and he yep. did a great job. Yeah, it was super. So, Thanks, Jason. Thanks. Um, so I'm here to ask all of you folks. Uh, I let me lay it out first. I spoke with Greg Mish, or Greg Mish, Jeff Mish Jeff. today, oh, yeah. um, and um, he said that he had absolutely no problem with the way it went last year with the skating rink. Um, you know. Two weeks after, three weeks after we took it up, you couldn't even tell that it was there. That kind of needs to change this year, and that's why I came to speak to you folks. So the way the land is currently, it's sloped a little bit. So we had 12 inches of ice at one end and four at the other. And with that happening, the ice didn't form properly with the, only the four inches, and people were skating, and they were stepping through and actually cutting the liner. And I, I went out multiple times to try and fix the liner and put more water in to no avail. Um, so what I'm asking for you guys, and I have uh, Jeff's permission, and he said it's not going to be a problem, I, so we need to level it out a little bit so it's, you know, closer than 11 inches, 12 inches on one end and four on the other. And I just need your approval for that. Can you and just describe what, what you need to do, Jim? So what we're going to do is um, scrape the grass off, and then put a little bit, and it's gonna be about 105 by 65-ish, because the skating rink is going to be the same size it was last year, uh, 58 by 98. Um, that's just the way the, board, the board's worked out. Um, and so we would have some dirt brought in, just a little bit, Not it, it's not gonna be a huge mound out there, like a, you know, a, one of those mounds for a septic tank or something. It's just going to be raised up a little bit so we can get it a little more level, but it's also still going to be pitched so the water runoff will go towards that drain that's over there. Um, and what will you do about the outside surface of the rink where you have raised it up? Are you are you raising up or lowering? We're going to raise it up a little bit. Okay, so... It, it'll just be a gradual slope. It's not going to be a step. Okay, so you're going to... Beyond the boards of the rink, you're also going to grade out. Yeah, so it'll grade out a little bit. So we're, I mean, you're going to notice it when you drive by. There's absolutely no, I'm not going to tell you you're not going to notice it. 
next spring when we grow grass, you're going to see. But if you look at that field, it goes like this, and there's dips and valleys and um, everything else. So um, it, it will be noticeable, but it, the water will still drain towards the um, the drain. The drain. <laughs> Yeah. And then who's going to do the work, Jim? Is the school going to pitch in, or is this? All I've got work? a buddy that's going to do the work with his equipment. From he didn't want to be mentioned. I don't <laughs> think okay. he's just doing it for free. Okay. So they're not. We're not he's like he's not charging park and rec. Um, he's just going to do it on his own time on a Saturday or Sunday. Where are the materials going to come from? I don't know that yet. We haven't gotten that far because it, it, if we can get somebody. To give us the fill local, that's what we're going to do. But I, I have to use loam because I need to plant grass there. Right. I think so. we still have some loam down at DPW from the projects here, but I don't know. Yeah. We could with check them. with them. Yeah, see if DPW Scott. has some okay. extra loam I'll call hanging tomorrow. out down there. Yeah. You know, unless tell, they need tell it for me, another tell project. Tell them we sent you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the field used for other than a skating rink? I know there used to be a softball field there. Is it that's no longer Nothing. the case? So it just. Nothing. Field. Nothing. It, they, they mow it, and that's it. Okay. The baseball field's gone. They ripped down, or softball field is gone. They ripped down all the backstops and the fencing along Route 9, and um, it's, I don't think they really use it for anything. Got a lot of use out of when it was cold and you had good ice there last year. So yes, it was, it, you know, it was, it was fun very well used. Using it. We saw a lot of people, it made a couple of different websites, too, that yeah. where they advertise skating. I don't know how that happened, yeah. but I think people just put it on there themselves. Yeah. Um, but it was a big hit. We got we had a lot of talks about it last year, yeah, it and Home Depot said that they would love to you know help out again this year. I mean, we have everything from last year. The only thing that we have to repurchase is the uh, liner, the liner because it got cut up so bad last year, mm -hmm. and we're instead of doing um, a generator on Friday and Saturday nights, we're going to get some. Uh, um, LED solar lights mm -hmm. that we can put in concrete so we can move them in and out. Mm -hmm. And then we I had to bring my wife's Jeep there. Well, I had to bring my wife's Jeep there and chain the generator <laughs> to the uh, to the Jeep so yeah. it didn't get stolen so I could leave it there without, you know, <laughs> being there. But uh, it worked it worked great last year and so yeah. that's kind of what we plan on doing again, but we're going to do their solar street lights. Is what they look like. So will we have, um, and there's a question for Carolyn, just if we are having somebody come in and do work like that, will there be liability coverage in case anything? So I was just going to say, I think we have a meeting with, with you, myself, and Greg yep. on, on another project. Yep. I think it would be a good question, because even though it's a volunteer, there's still a couple things that have come up to, in this conversation that we can go over. Okay. We probably have to bring in a couple other departments. So, okay. yeah. So, um, but we have a meeting scheduled for the 14th. 14th. Is that nothing's going to freeze by then, right? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So if you're okay with that, uh, members, I would like to just. There's a couple other departments I'd like to bring into that conversation. So can we make an approval tonight, or excuse me, can we make a recommendation tonight, subject to? Yes, that would be yeah. great. Greg, are you okay with that? Yeah, that sounds yeah. great. Great. Okay. Do you, are you going to need any help with the determining your your elevations? I've got another local contractor that's coming with a laser level okay. and everything else to uh, help me with that. Okay, then I won't offer my services. Uh, well, <laughs> you want to offer, we'll take it. Because hey, I'm, right? I'm kind of, he's <laughs> under my thumb a little. <laughs> and uh, he said he'd do it if, you know. Well, if you need the help. Okay. Do you know who I am? Absolutely. Okay. So just call me. <laughs> please, please say it in the right context. Even though he's masked up, he knows who you are. Well, he's got his name in front of him. Yeah, I he does. Well, I'll be, do you know what business I want to talk about? Yes, I do. All right, I'll be happy to help. You've done my house multiple times. Okay, I'll be happy to help. I appreciate it. All right, so motion to approve um, the request from Park and Rec for the ice rink uh, changes this year, subject to, again, satisfying whatever um, issues come up in the meeting that Carolyn referred to. Second. I have a motion in a second. All those in favor? Hold on. Quick, quick. Oh, oh. Bankable has a question. Oh. I am going to need water, and uh, I, again, more people we couldn't have done it without. I mean, it's tough. Park and Rec doesn't have a lot of resources, but luckily we have Chief Spanknable and Chief Mason and all these other people that have helped us out over the, you know, my few years with Park and Rec. But mm -hmm. they filled the uh, uh, rink for us 
and then topped it off a couple times last year. And you guys were that. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. Could be like my father-in-law back in the day, and he just went down and opened up the hydrants at the school and flooded the fields. Okay, moving right <laughs> along. That's a motion made. Well, that was back in the day when those things happened in town. I just wanted to give you a little history on previous ice skating rinks. All With right. one of those fields, no, I think we'd be in a little bit of trouble. I think we would be too. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Aye. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All thank right. you. You, you got it. Thank you all very Thank much. You. You're Thank you. welcome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget your son out there. No. <laughs> He's so quiet. All right. Special employee policy and designation. Okay. Did, we, did um, Mike want to go on? Huh? Did Mike have anything else tonight? No. I think he's trying no. to sneak out, but that didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> Bye, Mike. All Thanks, right. Mike. Um, this, uh, we have an employee who is working part-time for the um, DPW, as well as fills in as a bus driver um, when he's not working. This is, this is uh, Dennis Pachinski, who is now down to very part-time at the DPW, but is uh, someone who they get called, they call in for a sub-bus driver. So according to the Ethics Commission, you have to, um, designate one of those positions as what's called a special municipal employee designation. So you're not des you're not authorizing Dennis for that, you're actually authorizing that position to be a special municipal employee designation. So I just need a vote for what's that. What's the purpose? What is the purpose of that? I mean, what does it get? Why do we have to do it? Because the ethics Because the ethics, ethics committee, yeah. <laughs> at, at, no, it's, it's in regards to an employee working for two separate departments for the same town. Yeah. Okay. It's like double dipping only. It even happens when you volunteer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So okay. moved. Second. Nope. We have a motion, a second by Amy. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carolyn? Yeah. So believe it or not, the budget season is about to begin. Technically, on paper, I have it beginning yesterday. But um, so in the next couple of weeks, we will be sending out um, the budget requests uh, and the templates that Linda helps with. So um, what I'd like to do is it was really successful last year when the select board granted me that ability to just say, departments, what do you need? And they were extremely responsible, extremely um, aware that they, they weren't presenting a wish list, they were presenting what they needed. And, and, and not a lot of the departments had an actually large increase outside of if there was a salary um, contract. So I would really like to, that you know that our, we're recoup, kind of recuperating, but not fully from COVID and in the impacts of that, and I put that in that memo to you. But my recommendation is we, we are good with free cash right now, better than we've been in a long time. And I would like to move forward and present that same request to the department heads um, that present to me, what do you need to provide services um, to, to serve the residents of Hadley? And if there's an, a, a new service that you wanted to add or an addition that they had to prevent, they're gonna have to provide a, a narrative and data, which they did last time. They were extremely responsible. Um, and they were very good when I met with all of them. If I felt that something, this wasn't the right time, or I was weighing other increases that I knew were gonna be coming down the road, they were, they were very understanding. And we even brainstormed about consolidating positions and things like that. So that is my request, is that that would be a, um, an, an approach that would, we could do again for fiscal year 24. Carolyn, can I just, the only question I have, um, it, I mean, it seemed to me just from knowing how it had been done in years past where the select board would say, you know, no more than 5% or level, five, you know, whatever, um, and dictate it up front, this mm -hmm. seems to work so much better um, because the department heads are the ones that know. Mm -hmm. But then there might be <clears throat> items that, you know, and I'm going to use this as an example. So at one point, um, the select board had supported trying to put a, a planner, I think it was a half-time position years ago, right? Um, now, de the department heads wouldn't necessarily be suggesting that. So if there are items like that that, you know, maybe we're thinking we might like to 
talk about um, how, do, how do you want us to handle it? Should we talk to you individually? Do you want to have the select board have a discussion about some of the, uh, just that kind of stuff? Yeah, it, it's a good question. You know, I, I'm not sure how you want to, what's the, what would be the best? Well, the boards, I think, too, would, I mean, you're asking the departments, but I'm thinking asking the elected boards um, what they might need. Well, when I we're say when I say department heads, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm including board. it goes out to the boards and committees yep. as well. Yep. Yes. At one point, um, the departments gave a strength and weaknesses report, which I found very useful because a lot of a lot of the different departments do things that we're not all aware of, and that was that really helped us focus on what they thought they could do better or what they were doing well. What was that so that's a SWOT, SWOT analysis, SWOT and I know analysis. that that was done a few years ago. Yeah, that was I think really the, challenge, the challenge is, is did we follow yeah. it? And I don't know that we have to, on those results. So, and, and things have changed. If, if you're asking to do that now, I would rather not during budget, site, budget season. That, that is a real, that there's a lot of work that goes into yeah. that, and, and you do need a facilitator help with that. Well, some, um, of, the, some of the departments actually use that. They've actually carried it forward, and they use it to help them develop their budgets. But there are many department heads who are brand new that didn't go th go through that process when it was done previously. You know, like the Council of Aging Directors knew, and um, well, we only you go know, there, please, not tonight. Um, no, I'm saying I'm saying that yeah, right. for I think some of the like, like I know um, Chief Mason that he he looks at that, and that helps inform him on how to do his budget. So. Um, I just don't. I know what Carolyn's saying, though. For, for if we have people who've never done it before, and we're looking at bench strength too, it's a lot easier. And I'm not saying easier that there's uh, so much more staffing in a bigger department, but your three larger departments have more staff to be able to put that together. So just that I'm asking them to do the budget. Um, I, I mean, it's up to you um, how you want to move forward with that. If you have I don't positions do that you want to. I just think it, it helps departments really think about what they're doing and why. I and think they do do, though, Jane. I really do. I, do I think that. that what I have found since I've been here for two and a half years is how well the departments do, number one, with, with not, in my opinion, in my observations, I think Molly touched on it and Linda touched on it, not enough staffing, that I think they have done a remarkably well um, analysis of their own departments. Uh, I, I don't see any significant, because as, as I, I spend so much time with our departments and I hear the, the, the challenges and I hear the pleas for help in, some, in a few of these departments that um, I, I do think they have a good handle on their budgets. I, 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 I guess what I'm asking, and, and it's, I understand it's a lot of work, but it also let's a select board hear their please more directly than I need a new position or I need a half-time position because this is what we have been trying to do for four years and finally if we get this position well, that's we'll what, be able to do that. That's what they do with their needs when they ask for our request. Right, they well, tell us that's why they are asking for what yeah, they're I asking Yeah, I kind of feel like for. that's my responsibility okay. as a town administrator to know what those concerns are and to mm -hmm. then and to share those with okay. you. Right. It, certainly, you know, if you want to look at the SWOT analysis, I would like to look at the old ones and see how they panned out and really see, because mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's important that I see day to day uh, how stretched some of these departments are, and I am concerned about adding another project during the, during the budget cycle uh, to do that. And I just, if you look at what was accomplished last year with their requests and the, the, how we were able to, to balance that budget, and provide extra support. I, I just think it, it just it worked well for them. There was a low level of frustration, um, and again, because I'm with them all day long, with, with many of them, I'm with all day long. Um, but I certainly am open to taking a look at that SWOT analysis to see, did, you know, was it did it help? <clears throat> was it, it was an additional help to what what is being done now? Okay. And to Jane's point, I would assume that you are asking the questions. If somebody comes to you and says, we need X, you will ask, why do you need that? So that is, so because I've been through it on the other end, on the other side as a department head, um, I, I absolutely, and when I meet with them, 
Um, we literally have gone line item by line item to what's what's going on in that budget. What how is that providing service and and is it accurate? Let's look at the past few years. Have you used that amount? And if they haven't, we said, well, then I think we probably need to lower that line item. But also, when I'm looking now, it was what was either there wasn't enough money in a line item last year or there was a lot left over. That helps me in my analysis when I meet with each department head. So we go over all of that. And that is, that is uh, the value of me meeting and getting into the weeds with them. So, and they have been very good about saying, no, you know, you know you're right, let's, let's lower that line item and see how we do next year. Is there a couple, a couple that I kind of probably slimmed a little bit too much last year? Yes, um, but that is, there's no other way to know. Um, but. Yeah, so I, I think there would be good once you've done that, then at some point you come back to us and say, this is where we're at with this department and this is why. It's kind of what I, I do when I present the budget to you, but if you want a deeper level of that with a more of a summary. I think that's what Jane was asking for. So that's yeah, what it sounds like. That to would me. do it. Yeah. That you already have the information. Yeah. It, right. it, do you see it different than when I present the budget and go over each department? Because that's kind of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you're giving us the uh, the synopsis. You're not giving us the where you were in the weeds with them, so to speak. So, and, and it may not be necessary to go through every individual thing. Maybe if we just have okay. a yeah, question have that you can answer. Can I think if be... they present and what they've done in the past, because I've seen enough budgets go through over this place, that they present to us what their needs are. And again, you can say to them or she, Carolyn will show us exactly why is that need now or what's mm -hmm. different from the past. So you don't have to actually go through everything all at once when they're presenting things that they need. You kind of know what their budget is right now because we've been through it for a year mm -hmm. with, with the present, with having been on board at least this amount of time. And so that them presenting what their needs are for the coming year kind of gives you an idea and why they need it. So I think that gives you a pretty good idea of what the requests are. I don't think we need to micromanage. No, I, I don't. Well, I think you also have, that. You, you weren't here when I presented the last two years <clears throat> on the select board. And that, that, so I'm trying to think what extra, and maybe when you see that. But I will definitely keep in mind that you mm -hmm. want more detail. Also, when they go over, the, the finance committee meetings are open, which, um, certainly served a good purpose when I first got on the select board is going to the finance committee meetings and listening to them when they do their departments. Um, it kind of gives you an idea of what they're looking for. And again, they're presenting what their needs are, where they've been. So, you know, they keep going over this and they're redundant with everybody that they talk to about what their budget is and what their needs are for the coming year. So it does give you an idea without having to actually I found it better not that they came in, you know, unless we had a real concern on, on what, why we can't fund it, mm -hmm. you know, um, then we would have a bigger discussion on it for what their needs are. Okay. So going back to the question I posed then, so, so I gave an example of just like what's on my mind right now. Um, fire, right? Fires big time on, and I'm sure Joyce's as well. So, how do we get to 24 7 fire department coverage? What does that look like? What's the time frame? Um, staffing on multiple levels. We clearly don't have adequate staffing in multiple areas. I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, inspections. We've talked about that. Um, the structure of town hall. No, sorry. <laughs> don't leave the witness. No, <laughs> um, but you know, the, within town hall, like what's working for you, what's not working for you, and do you want a different? Does that mean a different configuration? We have this uh, longevity issue, like we all know about. We've, we every year ticks off, and we know more and more people are getting closer to retirement. So, what's the staffing plan behind that, right? You, you pointed that out, Carolyn, before. Mm -hmm. um, I brought up the, I'll bring up the planner again. I still think that that position would pay for itself, but that won't necessarily come out organically from the, from the departments moving up. And it sounds like that's more really with you from a leadership standpoint. So, so yeah, and you'll see that in my goals because I'm gonna go into that area of staffing and departments because it's pretty much, um, 
a good chunk of what I what I do is is identify where we we have some true gaps, mm -hmm. where we have stretch staff, the planner. Mike and I have already started discussions about it, and, and and this is where part of it is helping me to change the culture with the staff as well, because when I when I and I'm he'll probably like kill me for bringing this up, but when I asked him and we were meeting last week because we meet on a regular basis as well, and I said you know Mike what's what's 24 going to look like for you, and he goes, well I don't think we can't ask for more staff, right? We were told we couldn't, and I said by who? So there is and there is in the department's mind that they're not allowed to ask for more staff. So that is where you have seen increments in the past a few years since I've been here that there have been increments, but they are planned and they're thought out. But knowing that the ambulance is going to be coming on, yes, we're going to get revenue for that, but we still have to get staffing for that. But and you, can knowing only, you can only apply for the safer grant so many years in a row and be denied because we have too much money in our town. So basically, that's why we've been divide, you know, denied. But they're trying to rework that so that we can get two more firefighters, so that we can yep. expand the fire department. Help. And it's pretty sad that we have to depend on a grant to cover the necessities that we need here in town. Yes, it would be nice if we got that, but even two more firefighters with the safer grant would, you know, allow us. Really, doesn't cover us 24/7. It and doesn't. that's really something that this town needs to look at. And I've had more than, I can't tell you how many people have said that to me, that this is something now that this is a time to do it. We need to really, we've taken care of police. We've taken care of other areas. We need to take care of the fire department. And I know we're trying to do that with the ambulance and of that nature, but that's a whole department that we really probably should be concentrating on. Is it the department that we have done capital planning on, and is that the uh, department that's up for it this year? I don't know who's in the in the queue. Who's in the queue this year for capital planning? So, the so when you when so you say the back rolling again, Carolyn, before you came in, they the select board had started a program where um, different departments or different. Um, yeah, I'm aware of that. Had the, the and, and so, so that ended, so it didn't go all the way through. Yeah, and, and because of COVID, that cut. Yeah. cut. Yeah. So, I I would probably I'm going to recommend a different approach in my goals okay. for you. I I think that things change quickly. So to say that a department is the next in line, they may not need it right now. Right. So you know there is a working group that has a de designation that I have asked support from from finance and from capital to help in a true capital improvement plan. We're digging in deep, meeting with the departments so that we can really see a capital improvement plan, how it's funded, what's needed, and it's extending out five years. Because that's the hardest part. We can't just do it year to year. And David had a, uh, um, an improvement plan. Um, but I, I would really like to have some of the stakeholders, not just have it come from me. I think it needs to be from the stakeholders so that we can present it to you finance and capital, obviously capital first as they, as they go through. Mm -hmm. But there should be less um, vehicle um, submissions for annual. So that, again, I feel like I'm going into all my goals and stuff that I do, that I'll be preparing well, that's, for you. That's what we need to wait for and look for for when yep. you do present that so we have a better idea of where our thoughts should yeah. be going and where Absolutely. we should be concentrating and, on. And, and I think what you're saying is it's just commu it's communication. Where I'm, right. out, I'm sitting here going, yes, 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 as you're yeah. talking. Yeah. So I think it's just communicating of what, what, what I am working on and the discussions that I've had with the staff. So. Yeah, and I didn't want to, you know, again, I all th so, sorts of thoughts swirling in my head, and I'm sure there are four other people up here who have the same thing going on. So just trying to figure out what, <clears throat> what was going to work best and also just because something's important to Molly doesn't mean that that's important to Joyce. It's it's except what, for ambulance. It's yeah. why I didn't <laughs> it's, it's fire. why I didn't want to put in okay everybody gets capped at one, just nothing over 1%. Well that doesn't tell me that that puts in that mindset I really need 2% of an increase to increase some services but I can't ask cuz I I've, I've been stopped at 1% and all it does is suppress needs it suppress planning so that we don't know what funding we need, we're going we're to need in the future. Um, so that's, that is why my request doesn't have a limit. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you, I trust that you, you have amazing employees and amazing boards who, 
who have budgets that they really are responsible and extremely thoughtful in what they present and the discussions that I have with them. Okay. So I'm going to um, move that we allow you to take the same approach. Do what? Do what? <laughs> so there a motion for this? We have to move to like no, do I this, think, right? I think we can just just, just, just a conversation. Just suggest that our next conversation should be um, a more entailed detail of what you want to present to us, um, of what we're going to be looking at for. I won't have it by the next meeting. No, no. That's fine. No, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, would say, I, I was thinking more that is part of the budget preparation. Yeah. yeah. So that would be like I usually do present to you why certain um, departments need that uh, need the increase because I would never submit something with an increase without. Yeah. Yeah, so your, your original request is to send out the uh, draft this or whatever to the yeah. departments and directions for them to get their budgets mm -hmm. uh, looked at and present to you what their needs are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then if there's anything that we're thinking about, we can just email you or yeah, sit down with you so you have it yeah. in your head. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, I think this is a good approach. Yeah. yeah. So the Carolyn is looking for our approval to mm -hmm. do what she did last year. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. however, we have to get that across to her that we're good with it. Go for it. Nope. I agree. Do I it. agree. Do it. <laughs> we'll work on that motion. Just but vote. Yeah. <laughs> motion to approve Carolyn's draft here to get the budget started. I already made the motion. Yeah. Your second. Second. <laughs> second it. We already right. have a motion. I don't know what you were second. making the motion for, but okay, I'll second it. She was it. reading her letter. Oh, that's what we're doing. Okay. Got I, with that. I have a motion right. and a second. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All right. Code of conduct. <laughs> oh, we have the special town meeting recap, Jane. Oh, is oh. that ahead of this? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you got the code of the conduct. The code of conduct code is of before conduct. the town meeting. That's how Did I switch it? I, I don't. I'm reading my agenda. Oh, mine's nice. five point different. Four. I have it. Fourth town code he of just conduct. presented us with the code of conduct for all town employees and what boards number? and yada yada. Five five four. Yeah. You're supposed to say that. Yada yada. Huh? So he definitely does not oh. say yada huh. yada. <laughs> just so you believe me. Are, you on, are you on board, docs? <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm on a piece. <laughs> Has the exact same agenda. <laughs> All right, Carolyn, well, go cool. ahead. Present yes, support. Uh, if you remember um, several meetings back, uh, I think probably one of the first ones that Jane chaired was talking about um, a code of conduct, and we had samples that we were looked at. But Maya happened to have one um, available um, that I think is very, uh, I think it answers a lot of the things we were trying to say what should go in it. And so I've included that. It's a template. I would love to have you guys take a look at it, and then at the next meeting, if, this, if there's something that you want to add or something that you have questions about, to, to, to be able to bring those questions, unless you had time to read it and want, you know, it's up to you. But I didn't have any anticipa anticipation that you would adopt it tonight. Yeah, I, th I think we, we agreed on stuff like this. We would do like a first and a, and a second yeah. reading. Right. So the only thing I wanted to add, uh, absolutely like this, you know, this is something wanted for a while. And, but stumbled across something interesting today because part of this talks about, you know, basically people kind of staying in their lane and roles and responsibilities. And I found some, um, we have the Selectman's Handbook, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then the Finance Committee has a handbook. Um, and I was reading through the financial sections of it and it's interesting because some of that material is actually kind of in, in conflict. Like, you, you know, the Selectman's Handbook says one thing, yet the Finance Committee Handbook says another thing. And so, I mean, it probably, I'm just wondering if part of this process, we should also maybe just have like a roles and responsibilities, just a quick overview to make sure we're all on the same page too, because that was, um, I think this basically kind of eye opening. <laughs> but I but I think whatever we see in front of us here today and I've read through it, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter whether you have a handbook for selectment or a handbook for finance, I think 
this covers anybody that is an elected official, is a volunteer, works in the town, does whatever. I think it's a blanket for anybody within the scope of mm -hmm. the town. So I mean, whatever's in the handbook or the finance book, I think is out the window and this just covers everybody for the code of conduct on that area of those books. Yeah, That's what I, I'm saying. So, I mean, if they have something else different than this in their book, or we do too, this should be the standard town policy for everything, period. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that. I, so I'm, that we don't have to worry about what's in their handbook, what's in their handbook. This is just what I, we're going to follow, period. I'm totally fine with that, and when we, we vote, I'll support that. I, okay. I'm just bringing it up in that context I, yeah. because so it we pointed to out to it. me. And I say it because sometimes, you know, Carolyn and I have had a couple of conversations where Carolyn's like, well, we, it, that's, I don't think that that's right. I'm like, oh, no, but we did it this way. Yeah. And then, so just to make sure we're all on the same page, too, yeah. so that we're not stumbling over each other. Yeah. Uh, that and like I said, I just happened to stumble across this thing in writing, and I went, Oh, this is interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, when, when people are taking a look at this, if you don't want to vote on it tonight, I did cruise it and read it. Um, I don't have a problem with it. So, I mean, if people wanted to uh, do this as a policy and you want to vote on it at the next meeting, that's fine with me also. No, I've read it, and I agree with what you've said, Joyce and Molly. It, it makes sense, and it seems to cover all the bases that we need it to should cover. should be town-wide, period. Right. So would the intent be to get... I mean, we would have to have planning board and board of health and everybody, everybody, school committee right there. They would all have to. No, we set the policy and the rules for the town, the select board. Is that how it would work? This would be a select board policy, which select board. Okay, for and the it town. would be overarching, so they don't have yes. to themselves. It's for elected it. officials and uh, appointed. Okay, which really is everybody, everybody including right. employees. That's even better. And is there, I don't see anything in it about in, under the enforcement, um, there's the anti-harassment piece, mm -hmm. but. That's a, that's a separate, you mean enforcement in such a, what do you mean? If somebody doesn't, some person, staff or volunteer does not, does something that is <coughs> totally against this code of conduct, what happens? They can be um, may vote to censor any employee into, or any member and then decline to reappoint mm -hmm. in the case of where they're appointed. Who, who, who does that? Well, if, uh, it's like you can like re recalling a vote, right? Something yeah. like that. So. You would probably hold a hearing at that point because it's called. Who would hold the hearing? Well, That's we would. It's our we, policy. Yeah, we're setting okay. the policy, Jane, so, so we would us. be. Okay. We would do so. And what if one of us. Well, it would be the respective board or committee. So, so if it happened on the planning board, then the language says the board slash committee shall then take such action as authorized. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and it also we 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 have a present employee handbook that does um, it, it impacts every volunteer, every elected official, every employee. So that's a, a good reason why we should vote on it next time, just to make sure. Do we need to um, have legal look at this just because it says the information is general in nature and does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice? You're advised not to take or to refrain from taking any action based on this information without consulting your legal counsel about the specific issues. So this, this came is from good. Maria. This did? Yeah. So we're good. So it's, it, it did not come from our attorneys, but it's our risk management who are... It's, they're, it's they're good. reviewed by employees. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jane, you do have two hands up. It's up to you. I, I was waiting for okay. y'all. This is y'all's discussion. I was waiting for y'all to be done, and I was going to tell you. Okay. I'm good. Okay. So who would like to speak? Susan had her hand up first. Susan? Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. I think this, was, uh, this particular policy was adopted a number of years ago by the select board, um, along with... Uh, a number of other policies that uh, Maya had presented. Um, I remember showing them to David and him bringing it to a former board. So these might already be adopted. Not 
I, I'm not certain. Just wanted to throw that out there. Did have a code of conduct that they put in place, this but it was not this one. That was a different one. And then um, a prior, this is much more. Yes. And this then, this covers. Yes. 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 We do. Okay. Okay. Policy, the policy that was put in place was driven for select board only. Yeah. And yes. And then Bill Twyer has his hand raised. Bill. Hold on, Bill. You were muted. You need to unmute. Yeah, I just wanted to speak to the question of how how you go about enforcing something like this. We had a situation a few years ago when a member of the planning board made some remarks that did not were not well received, and uh, we did uh, go into executive session, discussed it, emerged, uh, took a vote to disavow the comments, then went into open session and revealed that vote. So uh, it's a mechanism, it's a route we've traveled before. Thank you. But Bill, um, you, you didn't have an actual code of conduct, correct? That was just how you chose as a board to handle it, right? Uh, my oh, my belief is that we did get some advice from legal counsel about how to, how the board could express its uh, sense of the board. I would have to dig deep to find that, but um, uh, it, it seemed to be a route that was traveled in the past elsewhere with no problem. Any other audience comments? No, there are no other hands raised. All right, so we'll do a second reading on this and vote at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, special town meeting recap. I think it was great. I think that the crew, both Jennifer and Alex, did an amazing job in terms of presenting it and having it available for people. And I know that Linda worked hard. I know the whole finance committee worked really hard, but Linda presented something that I believe that the residents finally understood about how money was being used, and that was very useful other comments or things we would change for future meetings i only got positive comments about it mm -hmm. um from you know from, again people who are routine either attendees or, or watched from home um and they were um, just generally i mean regardless of, of the outcome of particular votes that they may have so <clears throat> had opinions about but they definitely thought that the presentation and having the the powerpoint um, and the, the details behind the capital articles is very well received. So I think, um, I guess my only comment w would be, and it, this has happened on um, every town meeting that I've been to, is <coughs> some people show up and they go up to the microphone like this is the first time they're ever hearing about this. And, I, and the comments that are made seem like we, we had a form the week before that, you know, I think maybe townspeople need to take a little more initiative, I think, because I felt like there was a lot of um, things that were brought up that could have already been answered previously. And I actually um, thought because a little frustrating of, on that level. Of, the, of the PowerPoint that was done the night of um, town meeting mm -hmm. that we actually don't need to do the previous meeting because we had so few people that showed up for it. Yeah, it just, I mean, it I just, didn't find value in it. And we, we were just so every week doing something with the budget that it's right. not something that's all of a sudden, oh my God, where did they people. get that from? I mean, but, it's been something that's talked about frequently as we go through the budget process. And disappointed that we didn't have very many people that came to the forum. Mm -hmm. But I think in presenting the PowerPoint that you did a great job on, Jennifer, thank yeah. you, um, that they were able to see it in a bigger light, even though it's on paper. I don't know what it is about PowerPoint, but it seems like people like the PowerPoint, and I think yeah. that made them pay attention to what was up there and what was uh, they had to read and, and what was being said. 
So I don't know, maybe the next time we'll think about even doing the forum again. I'm not sure how I mean, I'll I feel about it in the spring, but it's just something I'd like us to think about. I mean, we, we probably, I don't know if we probably have to do it, but... I don't think you have to do anything. But uh, no, it just, it just, it was a little frustrating because people that have been tuning in, paying attention, and then people show up, and a, a town meeting should not have taken three hours. No. So, I think that's a little ridiculous. So I think, I think the forum was also useful because I think the final result from the finance committee was how to present this so people would understand it. And if we had not okay. had the forum, that might not have been. But that can be done as a also, select board. Yeah. But don't forget people, Alex is streaming and that goes up on YouTube. So even though we may not have people physically present, there are plenty of people who actually Yes. Yes. No, I did just look at that. But do we know how looking. many people are watching right now? Yes. Oh. Anybody? Right now, there's one on Facebook, one on YouTube. Okay. Cool. But so, there'll be more views later. Yeah. Right. Okay. But I think the whole the is whole comment. Is it on comment... TV at home? Is, mm -hmm. it, is it on TV? It is, yes. So, I mean, people are watching it on TV mm -hmm. also right yeah. now. But I mean, we don't know how many. I, I, I think that my entire point was that people spend all year working their butts off, creating all this information, and it's readily available multiple ways. And then we have to sit through a three-hour town meeting where people are just oh, this is the first time I'm ever hearing this. What is going on? Let me pick apart your spreadsheet. Let me pick apart your spreadsheet. And it's like these people have been working all year for this. And now you're just going to show up one day and treat people like that. Like I, some of the stuff, I just, I was a little disappointed. I'll say that's that. That's our form of government. Yeah, unfortunately, but, yeah, unfortunately I mean, that, that's the nature of the beast with town meeting. And my feeling is that if we had... 10 people show up to the forum and 20 people watch it on TV, that's 30 people we uh, reached before the town meeting. And I agree with you, Amy, that it, it's terrible that people don't spend the time to understand what's going on at town meeting, but they don't. Um, but after the forum, I was talking to a woman who had very interesting questions and didn't understand some things, and I was able to help her out to understand mm -hmm. and I just think that's a good thing and that's part of what we have to do. We have 5,000 residents in this town and we had what 160 come to town meeting. Yeah. That is not a good feeling that that's how this town is represented uh, in the choices that are being made. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is how it works. I mean, somebody stood up at town meeting and said, yeah, I, I don't want 80 people making the decision on these things, but again, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we can't go drag people to town meeting as yeah. much as it would be nice to. Uh, but it, but it, we did have more this time than we've ever had yeah, to do to start I mean, on I will say at that. 7 o'clock. Yeah, and we had a yeah. lot at the end, and I did want to say that yeah. the... Uh, the climate change question, even though it got voted down, there was a lot of talk about it. I saw Jack Sykowski a couple days later. I spoke to him. I said, look, you guys did a really good job. Keep up the good work. People felt like th what I understood was don't throw all this stuff at us. Give us a little bit at a time that we can understand and, and work on that. And so hopefully they'll continue to do that. And one of the things that the Climate Change Committee had hoped was to make climate change a conversation, and that certainly happened yep. because <laughs> of town meeting. And, and people were quite respectful mm -hmm. at the meeting. I, I was impressed with that. Yeah. All right. Okay. So Anything else? So continuous improvement. I mean, if, they're, if we're always open to ideas to do things right. yeah. differently. But this, I think this was definitely a positive step that Carolyn and and Jennifer. Jennifer and Alex and everybody that had yes. anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank but you. I all. just want to say also that the department heads who were so open to, per we, we actually were going to, the, 
the PowerPoint was in place for a few weeks, and it was, I, I have to thank all of the departments that pulled together to put all of those um, slides, presented the slides for Jennifer to put together. I mean, it was, I really, and, and I am a firm believer in you have to give visuals, and some people were resistant to that, but Kirk was open to it, and I was so, I appreciated that. And everybody who had to put things together, Linda put things together, I, and I think they got excited about it. Certainly, you could see the passion in each of them as they, they talked about what they were talking about. So I just, I really have to give credit to all of the employees who were involved. Um, and thank you to Susan and to Dan, who also helped with all of the preparation for that warrant to go on. So I just. Yeah. And thank you for all of your work. Thank you. All right, moving on. We've done 6-1 and 6-2. Other items? 6-3. Six, three. Six, three. Are they here? My 6-3 too. Wow. <laughs> and they're here. Tracy and um, Mike Bill. are here. Mike. Hi there. This is Tracy hey from Eversource. Tracy, Tracy from Dyke Redmond. Thank you so much for having us. Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, am I a little loud? I'll try to be quieter. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you very much. And Michael Kane is here with me from Eversource. Um, we met with you back um, on October 5th and wanted to come back to you um, to talk about the um, uh, the project that we're proposing at Eversource's Area Work Center at 55 Russell Street in Hadley. Um, and the project is a solar and battery storage project. Um, so I wanted to come back and just give you some updates about the project and answer any questions that you have. Um, so as you may recall um, from when we talked about it last time, this is a project that would um, add, as I said, um, solar um, energy generation and battery storage at that area work center, um, it would be built at no cost to the municipality. And we see that the project can offer several key benefits um, to, to the town of Hadley. One is that um, the solar power generated at the site would be sold into the wholesale energy market. And those revenues would be allocated to the benefit of Hadley, specifically with a focus on communities that meet the state's definition of environmental justice communities. So those revenues could be allocated in the form of a bill credit or in a grant or some combination of the two. Um, so we, we uh, would anticipate that those revenues would from the solar power generation would fully go to benefit Hadley. In addition, um, during power outages, the solar power would be used um, on site as clean backup power for emergency response activities and that, that currently go on at that area work center. Um, and would basically displace um, fossil fuel power generators at that site. Um, the project would increase the commercial tax base for the town. It would reduce uh, fossil fuel emissions, both locally, as I mentioned, by displacing the fossil fuel generators um, when there are power outages, but also regionally by um, selling clean energy into the grid. And the project would contribute to job creation and workforce development in several different ways. And I can go into that if, if you're interested in the details, but, but we um, definitely would prioritize with this project, uh, maximizing the use of the local workforce um, and providing li living wages for those working on the project. So we're proposing to build um, solar arrays on the roof area of the area work center and on an adjacent parking canopy, which would be built just next to the building on the east side. And there's a picture of, of sort of the uh, extent of the array and the attachments to the agenda of the meeting. Um, so I want to get now to the updates. All of that is the same in what I talked about at, at the last meeting that I attended um, on October 5th. Um, what's different about the project um, that I just want to share with you is the extent of the project. And thank you for sharing the, the um, photograph here. So um, as you can see, this is a smaller extent of the project than, than I had proposed when I came to talk with you last time. And the reason is um, that we we were proposing to scale it back is that there are hosting capacity limitations at this site. Um, and what that means is that there's only so much solar and battery um, capacity that can be added at that site without requiring expensive upgrades to the electrical circuit, which would also delay the project. So, um, so we are proposing to scale it back to fit within the hosting capacity of the site. Um, but still the, the 
you know, the revenues from this project would benefit the town. And one benefit of having a smaller project like this is that we expect that the permitting process would probably be simpler. Um, so the, the other thing is that, that if hosting capacity limits change in the future, it might be possible to add solar and battery capacity at the site. But for now, we see benefit in, in demonstrating the concept and starting to provide benefits for the community. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. And what I'm hoping is that, you know, if, if the select board um, feels that this is a good project concept, um, that you might be willing to, um, to write a, a, a brief letter of support and we could provide a template if you like, which we would then um, include in a petition to DPU. Um, we would need DPU's approval to start this project. Um, and so we would love to have a letter of support from you. We wouldn't go forward if the town didn't support it. Um, and then if the town supports it, and then if DPU supports the project, then we would um, begin the project in earnest and go through all the regular permitting processes um, that, that we would typically go through in a town. Um, and then we would also um, go through a procurement process to select a contractor who would build the project. So it is a bit of a, lo a long time to get this underway, but the first step is to see whether it's a project concept that, that you approve, and, and that's what I'd love to hear if you have any questions. It's an allowed use in the district. They are looking to get the, the process started through the select board, through this letter of support they're asking for. And once they get all their approvals from the, the state, then they have to come back to the planning board and go through site plan approval. And that ultimately will dictate what they can do there. So. I have no problem with this. I would make a motion to provide the letter of support that they're asking for. Would we like them to present the letter or do we want to write a letter? No, she, said she, if... she said she'd give a draft All right, mm -hmm. that I think... we can yeah. look at. Okay. I'll, I'll second. second that. Oh, did you do that already? Yeah. You quit tonight. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'll take it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a motion by Randy and a second by Amy to. Um, review the letter that they will submit, I assume, for the next meeting and um, approve that so that they can get on with their other permitting. Well, I don't know if they have to come to the next meeting. I mean, if we approve the letter today, or do you want to see the draft first before we sign yeah, it? I think, I think we should see the draft. I think we should see yeah. the draft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they might sneak something in there. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if they can. <laughs> if, right. if, uh, if you, if you send it to me, then I can send it right out to the select board so they'll have read it before the next meeting. Sure. That'd be fine. Sure. That'd be fine. Okay. All right. All those Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you for coming. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Take care. All right. Yeah. Now, the town administrator's report. All right, I did want to uh, just uh, kind of give you an update on what's happening with uh, the Route 9 widening project and the conversations that are taking place pretty much on an ongoing basis. Um, the, you know, the dirty work started probably around August and um, we are actually completed with the water replacement for the town, the ones that we're paying for that, that uh, they helped us, saved us about a million dollars. So that um, all of the pipes have been replaced, uh, and um, let's see, um, I, I guess the most important thing is um, that we have worked closely with Baltazar. Um, I know that there's been issues with at least one business where it was just a lot of impact on that business and there was a lot of dis discussions between the owner of that business, myself, Baltazar, um, as, as well as Mass DOT and trying to get it more updates on it. Some of it we couldn't, it wasn't real time. So there was a level of frustration. So I just wanted to share with you there at least one that I know of that we worked closely with, but really could not accomplish the best communication planned. I think they're done in that area that had that impact. But what I, uh, what I did want to let you know is uh, Scott McCarthy, our DPW director, has done a very good job of 
of uh, speaking on behalf of Hadley. So I can't get into the nitty gritties up about certain corrugated pipes versus this size pipe versus that. But he will, if he's not happy with something, he, he puts a meeting together. And we just had one yesterday and it was Mass DOT engineers, project managers, project manager for Baltazar. And Scott was um, really on board pushing for what he felt was best for Hadley. So we also have um, staff from the water and sewer department keeping an eye on the progress. Um, throughout the, throughout the week, so um, I, ju I just wanted to share that that there's a lot of conversation. If we don't speak weekly with Baltazar or the uh, engineer from MassDOT, it's 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 every other week, but pretty much it's every day that there's some contact with somebody from Hadley. So you are being well advocated for um, by those employees. Um, I did want to talk to you about um, the the Hawk signal light, which is what it's called, which is was the location of that recent hit and run. Um, Senator Comerford and I spoke on the phone for a while yesterday and wanting to know, have there been other concerns expressed? To, to me specifically, there has not. I would like to know if you have gotten um, any concerns or responses um, from residents. Um, she has spoken with a, a family member and what we, what, what uh, Senator Comerford and I agreed that we would wait for the state and local police's investigation to be completed to find out what all the factors were. And then I, th I do foresee there being a, a conversation with Senator Comerford here at one of your select board meetings to just say um, whatever, whatever the results are, what, if there's a concern about the safety of that light um, to see how you guys want to work together. So I just wanted to let you know conversations are taking place regarding that. Also, the textile recycling program has began November 1st. Uh, so DEP um, initiated a waistband effective November 1st. So there is a box located at, um, it's called, from, it's a, the best, the Bay State textile collection box is located at the transfer station. If you have a sticker, you can bring unwanted clothing and other textiles to the transfer station. If you don't have a sticker, you can go to um, the Salvation Army um, on Russell Street and get rid of textiles that you don't want. Can I just make a comment to that? Please look at the boxes where you're leaving things because there are textile recycling boxes that people are also leaving non-textiles at. Mm, okay. So it, it's a specific sort of... Yeah. Just, okay. Good luck with that, Jane. I... Jennifer kind of just said the same thing. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. yeah. Yes, um, we looked at what was the best way and the most um, observed way of having boxes that the town was providing. And what, what we came out on was that it's best for right now to keep them at the transfer station, and that way you don't have people piling things up on town property. So, uh, but, you know, that was there was a discussion that, that how to keep how to keep having the All right. So, um, and I, I honestly can't remember if I brought up the opioid settlement that is um, Hadley is receiving funds for every, actually across the nation, there was a, um, a settlement uh, with three pharmaceuticals that had to pay into an account um, to, to support municipalities on the impact of the opioid crisis. So um, Mike Mason and Annie McKenzie, um, we've met and they have, they're going to continue to meet to try to find a program in place that would be the most efficient. It's, it's about 25 years worth of money. It's a small enough amount of money though that you really can't hire a person, but if we could, we could um, piggyback onto another program and Annie and Mike Mason are, help, Mason are helping with that. So I just want to let you know. That's it. All right, let's go back to the Hawk light. I've had um, two people comment to me that they think that they are not the best solution. Um, and today I noticed when I was driving down Route 9, just as I got close to the light, it turned solid yellow. Then it started blinking. So I pulled over afterwards just to see what was going to happen, because I had actually never seen one that was in the process. And I think it's confusing because it's, it's, it doesn't turn red for a long time. And so 
people don't know what that means. There's nothing that indicates what you're supposed to do. I think people just don't read too and love. It. It's not something that you learn in driver's ed either. Right. Um, but because I've seen it both ways, I've seen people just driving straight through it, not paying attention. But I've also seen people sitting there stopped when it's you know blinking red, um, and it distinctly tells you what to do. But I I don't think many people are um, observant potentially when they're driving. I think but, there should be a better light. But there. I don't Somebody think that's a good a light. Yeah. To turn red so they can cross. Right. Right. Like I don't. Period. I think there's just too many the options blanket. on it. Like I don't find it. You know, I don't think it's an appropriate light for that type of heavy travel. I mean, I could see it maybe on a less traveled street, but on a four lane highway, I, that just doesn't seem like an appropriate option. But we've asked for years there and at the elementary school um, to have the school district lights put up 20 miles an hour like they are in every other town. That yeah, this they have is like a, a school, blinking school zone blinking one that's school, been there that, that doesn't light. even have anything on it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, those are things I've seen in other communities everywhere that when you approach a school zone, you've got one <clears throat> 20 mile an hour one going one way and 20 mile an hour going another so that that certain section of town is only 20 miles an hour. I went through town this morning mm -hmm. and I just pulled through the light while someone just whizzed on by and I bet you they were going at least 50 or 60 miles an hour in the center of town, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, I know that past that is 40 miles an hour, but they're going way over 40 miles an hour and I'm yeah. sure they're doing faster than that going through the center of town. Yeah, well, the, the light in question is also in a terrible place coming from Northampton. You come yeah, around the around corner the curve, and, yeah. and then you're right on it. Yeah. So it probably needs to move. I, I, I would imagine that it got put there so that people could go from the courthouse over to Cumberland's. Yeah. 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 Or the bus or, stop is you know, there. there. Yeah, there's the bus, bus stops stop on both sides. The bus stop is at Cumberland's. Yeah. Um, the state dictated the location of yeah. that because we had extensive, we are, we, this, we did. Yeah, extensive we did. discussion with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even if it yeah. moved up to Wally or Goff, whatever the next street up is, Goff, it would be another yeah. several hundred yeah. feet. Mm -hmm. to, uh, so would you like, I think we should put it I on the future agenda, and I think we should it, invite yeah. Senator yeah. Comerford. Yeah. Uh, if you're okay, I'm, I'll kind of feel out where they are in the investigation. If it's like, you know, they're, they're still two months out, mm -hmm. I'll well, see. Even what, the 20 miles an hour is, is school zone, so that it, it, it says when the lights are blinking between this and this, yeah. this is when it's 20 miles an hour. Yeah. So, so, I mean, it's also designated and quite clear to people either way. Yeah. Yeah. And I had them up in Salisbury all year. And Carolyn, I don't necessarily think that the, uh, where they are in the investigation is an important factor here because I think all of us agree that, that the way that light functions is not a good thing. It's confusing. And that's not going to change no matter yeah. what they do in, with the investigation. I don't think we can so. take an action though, right? Like we could, Correct. We couldn't do it. We couldn't make any changes if they're still under investigation. We can't make changes on that. We don't want to make changes. We have to, make, we have to advocate to Mass DOT. Yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, that's, we can make our yes. town recommendation to yes. them. Yes, that's, and that's yeah, what I think. Yeah, that's all we can do. Yeah, yeah. I understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Can I offer a recommendation? When the hot crossing signal was put in place, Lieutenant Cook did a PSA um, explaining how it worked mm -hmm. and having he worked with having media to do that and I don't know if you could access the files yeah. that were created in <clears throat> but it might be worthwhile for the town or for Lieutenant Cook to put on his hat again and, and mm -hmm. maybe um, do a PSA for that and then we could put it on the website put it on having media and mm -hmm. maybe even reach out to the local news sources to see if they could yeah. Sort of, it might it might be worth our uh, a little bit of effort on our part to do, to do that. And sort of just give everybody a reminder on how to use the hot crossing. And yeah. if we push it a little bit harder, it might help in the meantime while y'all are getting to the point of the discussions with Carolyn and Senator Comfort. Yeah. Um, it might be. When was that installed? Um, so when I was on select board. Yeah, so that would have been four years, four four years, years ago. Oh, so that's how many new 16-year-olds with licenses and how many new residents that might have well, not have had experience with And the, the other past. thing is, as we spoke earlier about our numbers, we're a town of 5,500 people with 100,000 people driving on Route 9. Mm -hmm. 
those are the people we need to notify. Those are people that need to be educated. Right. right. That's how the town. If you see if a news source might cover it, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know how that works, but if you could get forty or twenty-two, or you, you, I see you have an idea. Well, if we can I, 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 I want to be careful. I, I, I would rather like do some, you know. I, I think there's I think we important conversations to have before we start or you start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, this at this point, I would say let's get it on agenda to, to talk more in more depth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yep, yeah. for sure. All right, on oh, this, another yeah. agenda. I just don't want to get you guys in trouble. Okay. Okay. What? We can we can talk. We can talk. Tomorrow. We can talk. Okay. All right. Um. All right. Announcements. I have I have one. Um, we have the passing of Maria Sliz. She was our. Uh, older, one of our older residents at 95 and uh, lifelong resident of Hadley. So our condolences to um, her two daughters and friends and family that may still be here. She lived on uh, West Street, so condolences to her family. Just want to bring up also to um, thank Hadley Fire and Police for their trunk or treat. They did a great job. Also, that was a well-attended uh, function also. So. Um, Thank you to them for providing that and Park and Rec that was involved in that also. So that was good. Um, Hadley Police Department has started their angel tree. Um, so you can email or send in a request that you want to uh, adopt a family um, to provide uh, presents or whatever they might need. Their request might be for Christmas. Um, the uh, Holy Redeemer Church is also a part of it. They will have a tree. You can take an angel off of their tree and um, support that also. Um, email Lauren at the Hadley uh, Public Safety. She also will take any type of donations or whatever and um, see what, what is needed out there for, for this uh, coming up season. I skipped over um, other items for future discussion. I was just writing off the, the uh, Hawk light. Is there anybody else who has anything else we should put on future agendas? Mm -hmm. Nope. All right. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Moved by Joyce. Second. Second by Randy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Thank you very